Good morning. Welcome to church on the second Sunday of Advent, December 6, 2020. I'm your music director, Kevin Nave. I hope this morning finds you happy and healthy. If you would raise your voices for our opening hymn this morning, it's number 211 in your hymnal, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1 and 2, shared with us this morning by Linda Fries and Jessica Riley. Good morning, friends. I am Rainey Stevenson, lay liturgist for today. As we have begun the new year in our Christian calendar and are nearing the end of this difficult year of 2020, our invitation to worship is a prayer asking for healing and wholeness. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come into our midst. Come into our hearts. Come into our homes and our community into our schools, and into our workplaces. May we welcome you everywhere, making room for you, preparing for you, anticipating your arrival with joy and reverence. We commit this season of Advent to becoming ready. Shine your light in those nooks and crannies we keep in the shadows. Sweep the cobwebs from our long-hidden doubt and fear. Repair our torn and wounded places. We pray for the wholeness only you can give. We long for your arrival. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm Pastor Jack Mantra. And I'm Reverend Cora Glass. We want to welcome you to this service of worship this morning as well. Everything you may want to participate in this service of worship is available on our website, waterfordcumc.org. There you'll find the worship notes, the lyrics to our songs, the scripture, and even devotionals that you can do this following week. We send that out in an email on Thursdays, and if you would like to receive that email, please contact our church office, and we'll add you to that distribution list. We will also be celebrating communion today, so I encourage you to take a moment to get your bread and your juice or other substitutes so that you can participate with us later in worship. I want to also uh, make you aware that our compassionate Christmas cards are being sold in our church office through December 23rd. These are cards that you can give to your friends and family, letting them know that you made a donation in their honor to a variety of ministries that our church supports. So please keep those in mind as you're trying to figure out uh, what you'll give for Christmas this year. We recognize that there are several of you today joining us that you may have celebrations and concerns to share. And if you want to text those celebrations and concerns to the number on the screen, we can include those uh, prayer requests in our time of prayer later in the uh, service. 
During this season of Advent, Reverend Cora and I are offering study sessions connected with our Advent uh, series of messages on traveling light. Join Reverend Cora on Facebook on Monday night or join me in a Zoom gathering on Wednesday nights. Just contact me and I'll put you into that Zoom community. Uh, Friends, at the end of the service, please remember to record your worship attendance using the form on our website or the link in the comments section. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope. Today, we will light the second candle in our wreath, the candle of love. The Bible tells us that it is because God loved the world so much that Jesus came. One of the most beautiful descriptions of love is found in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. This is what Paul wrote. Love is patient, love is kind, and envies not one. Love is never boastful, nor conceited, nor rude, never selfish, not quick to take offense. Love keeps no score of wrongs, does not gloat over other people's sins, but delights in the truth. There is nothing love cannot face, There is no limit to its faith, its hope, and its endurance. Love will never come to an end. There are three things that last forever, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all of them is love. Let us pray. God, thank you for loving us and for sending us Jesus to teach us about your love. Help us to remember that love will never come to an end. Amen. Children, change is a big part of life. Sometimes things change that we expect, like the length of our hair or the weather outside. But this year, a lot of things changed that we didn't expect, like how we go to school, how we celebrate holidays, and even our travel plans. It's tough when things change. We might feel disappointed or frustrated or surprised. Life feels easier when we can depend on some things to just stay the same. In our Douglas Talks video for today called Christmas Tree, Douglas explains why we use a Christmas tree. Most of us use an evergreen tree for our Christmas tree. We call these trees evergreen trees because they are always green. Unlike other trees that we might have around our yard that shed their green leaves every year, evergreen trees stay green. They're reliable. Now, our Bible doesn't say anything specifically about Christmas trees or that we should put them up at Christmas time, but the Bible does say a lot about God and God's love. It says that God's love will never leave us or forsake us. It says that God's love is always with us. The Bible says we can depend on God's love every day. So, the next time you see a Christmas tree, Maybe your decorated evergreen tree at your house. Take a moment to remember that God's love is always with you. I'll share the link to that Douglas Talks video below in a few moments, but first, let's pray. I'll start, and you can repeat after me. Thank you, God, for always being with us. We can depend on you to love us, even when our lives continue to change. Amen. Those who are in on our prayer list, and you can receive this prayer list uh, either through the email that goes out on Thursday, or you can download it from our website as well. 
I have a few uh, concerns to keep you uh, aware of. Uh, Sue Krager, who is the sister of Mary Landry, uh, has uh, COVID, and so we want to keep her and her family in our prayers, as well as Ralph and Barb Irish uh, have COVID, and that's the brother and sister-in-law of Diana Carter. We want to uh, remember uh, the Reverend Jim Kellerman, a former pastor here at Central Church, who is recovering from knee replacement surgery. So we want to keep Jim in our prayers as well. And uh, Danny Townsend uh, Hone has had uh, some health concerns and has had some positive test results this past week. So we're thankful for that. We've also uh, want to extend sympathy uh, to the Lund family. Joyce Lund passed away on November 22nd and uh, her celebration of life was a week ago yesterday. And so we want to keep the family, keep Dick and the rest of the family in our prayers as well as sympathies uh, going out to Emily Went on the death of her brother-in-law, Larry Clark, also uh, due to COVID. I'm going to keep these folks in our prayers as we keep uh, the medical professionals who are dealing with uh, COVID patients as well as other patients uh, in our healthcare system. We want to keep everyone safe as possible and pray for their um, work and, uh, and give a prayer of thankfulness uh, for all that they give in doing their work. Let's pray. God of creation and ancient of days, you come to us refreshed as tomorrow and sure as dawn swelling on the horizon in early light. Draw near now and await with us. We wait with the return of glory, the advent of holy time, the birth of a child. Wait with us for the end of our regret, the rebirth of our joy, the time when old becomes new before our very eyes. Renew us, O God, give us patience. Let us remember how sure it is that weeping only endures for a night and joy returns in the morning. Let us remember the depth of our sadness on other occasions and how surely you bring us back to gladness. Let us bring a word of hope and healing to those who are ill, those who are brokenhearted, and those who need you most, and those who believe they have no need of your presence. Give this congregation the patience of Advent, that we may be confident of Christmas, but not rush it. Let time slow down now and in holy patience. Let us await you and your entrance into history, even our own. We pray in the name of the one who will come to us and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, 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 you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah. 
I invite you to take out uh, your message notes if you've downloaded them or printed them up and you can fill in the blanks or you can write in the margins, whatever is helpful for you. And then there's five days of devotional material that might help you uh, unpack further the scripture uh, lesson as well as the message as I share it with you this morning. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. During this season of Advent, as we anticipate and celebrate the birth of Christ, we are considering what it means to travel light. This might be a good opportunity to remind ourselves that spiritually, this world is not our home. We're just passing through. But as we live our lives here, we accumulate so much, and we can accumulate not only material things, but we also uh, accumulate distractions and hurts and disappointments and failures. So as we travel through this Advent season toward the end of a very tough year, we really need to let go and, and travel light. We need to let go of stuff and bitterness and control and failure. We need to let go of distractions in our lives in order to uh, do what is essential on any given day, we must clear the clutter from our minds to focus on what really matters. And it's a fight to focus. <laughs> Why don't you say that from right from your home? Just agree with me. It's a fight to focus. If, if you study the word distraction, you'll find it comes from a Latin derivative that, was, uh, that arose in the 1590s, and it means a pulling apart or a separating or a drawing of the mind in different directions. Distraction, uh, as uh, Pastor Craig Groschel uh, from uh, Life Church in Oklahoma City says, the devil doesn't need to destroy you if he can just distract you. <laughs> Distraction is a powerful force that if we're not careful, it can eventually destroy us. An article in the New York Times proclaims humans specialize in distractions, especially when the task at hand requires intellectual heavy lifting. All the usual is it lunchtime yet inner voices and external interruptions like incoming phone calls are alive and well. But in this era of email and instant messaging and Googling and e-commerce and iTunes, potential distractions while seated at a computer are not only ever present, but very enticing. Distracting oneself used to consist of sharpening a half dozen pencils or lighting a cigarette, but today this is a, a universe of diversion to buy, hear, watch, and forward, which makes focusing on a task all the more challenging. The writer of that article wrote, wrote about Peter Hecker, a, a corporate lawyer in San Francisco, who said that when he hears the chiming alert of a news email, he forces himself to continue working for another 30 seconds before looking at it. 30 seconds, mind you, not 30 minutes. Mr. Hecker said, deep thought for half an hour? Boy, that's hard. Does anyone ever really have deep thoughts for half an hour anymore? <laughs> Remember the deep thought uh, segments at, at Saturday Night Live? They were actually the, the thoughts of Jack Handy, a comedian who wrote a book by that same title, Deep Thoughts. They certainly weren't half an hour long, or they weren't even half a minute long, but they were really just fillers for the show. Little distractions in the show made to transition. Some serene music would come on, and there'd be a, a bucolic picture, a, a beautiful picture, and then you'd hear something like, I hope if dogs ever take over the world and choose a king, they don't just go by size, because I bet there are some chihuahuas who have some good ideas. Deep thoughts. <laughs> they were funny. Where were we? Okay, distractions. I believe the story from the Gospel of Luke, read earlier, is a powerful illustration concerning and doing what really matters in life. 
Jesus is in a village where a woman named Martha opens her home to Jesus and his disciples. And as Jesus is talking, Mary is being the hostess with the Moses, if you will. And she's making sure that the table is set, the casserole is almost done, and the cobbler is ready to put in the oven, and all the ice uh, tea glasses are filled. Martha is rushing around making sure everyone has what they need. She's in and out of the, the kitchen with plates of hors d'oeuvres and drinks. We read in verse 40 that Martha was distracted by her many tasks. While her, we assume, lazy no good sister Mary sat at Jesus' feet listening to him teach. And finally Martha breaks. And she doesn't just go up to uh, Mary and maybe whisper in her ear to get some help, but she goes right to the top and she confronts Jesus and saying, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. <laughs> finally, Martha uh, has given in and she's fed up. And Jesus answers Martha with these words, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. You know, for years, for years, I heard these words of Jesus as critical, sort of scolding Martha for being, uh, not, uh, for, for not paying attention to what really mattered. I mean, Jesus isn't afraid of confrontation. I mean, remember the young rich ruler or the Pharisees on numerous occasions or the merchants in the uh, temple court. But I, today, I, I hear these words of Jesus differently with a softer and caring tone. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by so many things. There is need of only one thing. Another version of this scripture says, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Jesus continues, Mary has chosen the better part, which is not to be taken away from her. In other words, what Mary chose was internal and eternal. It can never be taken away from her. Mary has focused on, on what matters most. Whether or not Mary can fully comprehend what is going on, she chose to be in God's presence in a powerful and intimate way. Now, to be sure, Martha wasn't doing something bad. Rather, what she was doing was good. Thank God for people like Martha. It's because of the Marthas in the world that we eat on time. We get the bills paid, schedules get created, and the house gets decorated, and the gifts get wrapped. If Mary's ran the world, many things may never get done. It's an issue of priorities. Few things are needed or indeed only one. So often the most difficult choices aren't between good and bad, but, to, but between good and best. You ever invite people over to your home? And you get the house picked up, and you get it all cleaned up, and everything looks great. And, and then you notice a cobweb in the corner of, of your living room. And, and, and you see it, and you say, I ought to knock that down. I mean, you can't see it from all angles, but from some angles, it looks like a cable on the Mackinac Bridge. Then you say to yourself, i got to take care of that, but you're busy, and you forget. So now you're entertaining your guest and you see that darn cobweb and it just ruins your evening hoping that no one else sees it. I'm not saying that has ever happened in any of your homes, but you can imagine, right? So often the most difficult choices aren't between good and bad, but between good and best. It would be so much better just to focus on your guest, enjoy their presence, rather than a spider's artwork in the corner of your living room. So today, friends, I want to share three thoughts on choosing what is better and letting go of distractions. First, it may seem obvious, but it's a great place to start. First, diminish the distraction in your life. You have to distance yourself from that which really distracts you and from, from what really truly matters. The Apostle Paul gives us some straightforward advice focusing on what truly is important. He says, I am saying this for your benefit, not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. 
whatever will help you serve the Lord best. Not average, not mundane, not just to get by, but best. We need to do what will ever, what will, whatever, what will, <laughs> we need to do whatever will help us serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. And there are so many distractions, especially if you're now working from home and, and especially if you have some small children in your home. And I know you love your distractions, I, I mean your children, but they hinder your progress. When you're trying to get some work done sometimes, you're caring for them, you're caring for the home, you're caring for your work. For all of us who are working from home here, there's the TV, there's the internet, there's the, the kitchen with, with all its hot and cold snacks, and, and there's that constant reminder of all that should be done in your home. Where was that cobweb anyway? I just want to mention one distraction that has taken over the world in less than two decades, um, our mobile devices. Can I get an Amen. On average, we pick up our phones, what do you think? How many minutes? How, every, every 12 minutes, we pick up our phones. And we spend an average of five hours a day on these little things. Over two of those hours are spent on social media platforms. And if you're in your 20s, you have the potential to spend seven years of your life on this device. Our lives, friends, are, are too valuable, our calling too great, and our God too good <laughs> to, to do less than serving our, our Lord with as few distractions as possible. So I'm asking you to consider, friends, what would it take to live your life in the most meaningful ways possible for the greatest purposes of God? Shut your door. Cancel Netflix. Turn off your notifications. Unplug the X Xbox. Delete distracting apps and put your phone in another room. I hear the words of Jesus now with love. Martha, Martha, you are distracted by so many things. Come be present with me. First, we have to diminish distractions. Second, we have to focus on what truly matters. Focus on the important if you want to experience success, if you have to do more of what matters. That may mean saying no to the good and saying yes to the best. Solomon wrote in Proverbs, set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose. Look straight ahead, ignoring distractions. Watch where you're going. Stick to the path of truth and the road will be safe and smooth before you. <laughs> Think of Peter in the boat. Uh, with the other disciples as Jesus approached them walking on the water. You know the story. Peter, Peter looked out at, G, uh, at Jesus and said, If it's you, Jesus, command me to come to you. And Peter walked on water. He did. We often look at this as a story of failure, but he walked on water until he noticed the waves around him and felt the wind blowing around him until he got distracted from one thing. A couple of verses later from the proverb that I read earlier, Solomon writes, don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take the detour that leads to darkness. Focus is critical. You know, we, we never wander into righteousness. We never just stumble into effectiveness in our lives. We, we never simply fall into bringing glory to God. We have to be intentional. It takes focus. We do all these things with a fixed purpose. They don't happen accidentally. So we have to diminish distractions, focus on what truly matters, and the third thing is listen to the voice of God. Isaiah 30, 21 tells us, and when you turn to the, the right or to the left, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I'm asked from time to time if God still speaks to us, and my answer uh, is clear, of course. And it may not be a word that you hear from behind you. It might be the trusted advice 
of a good friend. It might be an insight that you gain from Scripture. It might be certain circumstances through which you find direction and new purpose. You have to listen to God's voice. You've got to decide that you're not going to let noise from this world distract you from the voice of God. Your life is too valuable. Your calling too great. And your God too good to settle for anything less, my friends. It's a fight, friends. It's a fight to focus and not be distracted. But it's worth the fight. Listen. Listen. Can you hear Jesus' loving words? Martha, Martha. Jack, Jack. Rainy, Rainy. Insert your name here. <laughs> you are so distracted with many things. I love you. Come and be present with me and discover your value, your greatest calling, and the goodness of your God. And that's the word of God for the people of God today at Central Church, friends. I hope you found it helpful. I offer it in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Friends, we're going to take an offering now. Central Church is a, is a, is a member-supported organization, so, so your tithes and uh, the gifts and offerings that you give go to support the ongoing operations, missions, and ministry of our church. And we want to thank you for your uh, great support during this year. If you want to continue to give, you may continue to send in those offering envelopes or or uh, in an envelope of your choosing, but there's also information that will come up on the screens that will tell you how you can give electronically or through texting. Again, thank you for your generosity. Let's enjoy the beautiful offertory that June has prepared for us. Let us pray. Blessed God, we stand before you as your people, offering to you what we can in anticipation of your coming again to earth. You give us so much, and we give so little. Yet you are gracious to bless what we give. Please accept these gifts and transform them into your work on this earth as we make ready for the newborn King, the newborn Christ. Amen. Friends, we're going to now participate in communion, and I invite you to prepare your communion elements. Friends, the communion table in the United Methodist Church is open to all. So whatever elements you have or whatever uh, <laughs> you want to have communion with, it, it will be a part of our celebration today you know that you are invited to this table as a part of who you are as God's people, as God's family. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious God, we ask that your presence be felt with us today, that your presence be real to us, just as real as these elements of bread and juice, or whatever we have to partake today. As the scriptures tell us, we may taste and see that the Lord is good. We ask your presence with us as we celebrate this sacrament begun by Jesus, blessed by his presence with his disciples. As we remember that on that night, 
He took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. As often as you shall eat of it, remember me. After the supper, Christ took the cup. And again, he gave thanks to you. He said the traditional blessing. And then he said to his disciples, take and drink from this. This is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. So as we remember the mighty acts of Christ in our world, as we remember Christ's saving acts in our world. May we be thankful for all that Christ has done for us, recognizing how he binds us together through our mutual need and creates community among us, that as we remember him, not only his death and resurrection, but his birth as the incoming of God in our history, may we rejoice now and forevermore. We pray for these things, Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Friends, with the confidence of children, let us say together the prayer that Christ has taught us, our Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We men as we are, are of one body. When we partake of these elements, it is a means of recognizing that we are the body of Christ in the world today. Behold the body of Christ. When we drink from this cup, remember we, we remember that we are a people for whom Christ sacrificed himself. And we are freed from our sins. And when we are freed, then we can joyfully serve our God. Behold the blood of Christ given for you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, We ask that your grace be upon us, that as we seek to be your people, as we seek to be your presence in the world today, help us to know your freedom, that we may proclaim your love, your peace, your joy, and your hope, that we may be your people and proclaim you as our God. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Talk about being distracted as I look down to look at my communion cup and carefully tear the foil away so that I may drink the elements. Somebody said, is baby Jesus in the manger? Oh, hey, Sally. Uh, no, Jesus is not in the manger. He hasn't been born yet. So that's, that's what, how we do it here at Central Church. <laughs> he will come and he will be there on Christmas Eve. Let's, uh, uh, I want to thank you for uh, worshiping with us today, friends. As the busyness of this time, even as we continue to shelter at home and we're careful when we go out, if we must, it's an overwhelming time, as in any past years. Perhaps even more so. My prayers are 
all too often deep sighs of despair rather than deep appreciation for what God is doing and will do through the birth of Christ into our world once again. Remember when you were a child and the anticipation of Christmas was overwhelming and you became less patient with each passing day? Yet on Christmas morning, our impatience, our angst and concern melted into a joyful day of celebration, of being in one another's presence. Uh, And and, and yes, uh, there were probably a few gifts involved as well that made us glad and appreciative. Along with you, I am anticipating what a COVID-19 vaccine will mean for us. And And when it comes... Will we complain and shout, well, it's about time? Or will we receive it as a gift from our creator, even though it's through the hands of gifted scientists and dedicated medical professionals? Will we wonder with joy over the gift, even as we rejoice and give thanks for the gift of that first Christmas? We have to wait, friends. We have to decide the condition of our souls when that time of waiting is over. God bless you. And again, thank you for worshiping with us. Please raise your voices one more time for our closing hymn, People Look East, verses 1 and 4, number 202 in your hymnal, shared again with us by Linda Fries and Jessica Riley. Let us pray. Loving God, our time in your presence has revived and refreshed us. May this time move us forward into our week with renewed passion for your work in the kingdom of God. Give us eyes to see where you are working that we may readily join you. In the name of Christ, whom we await in the name of your Holy Spirit, who is your presence with us now, we pray. Amen. Have a great day, friends.